Okay, folks, so here we are <clears throat> with the painting of the, the Rubicon North Vietnamese Army figure set. Um, or certainly painting a few of the figures for, for what I want to use them for. So, I've done some, and here we are. Here is one of them here. So we're going for this sort of light brown sort of uniform with green chest rig, uh, AK-47 variant of green hat with the red um, MVA North Vietnamese sort of logo. And then some quite sort of muted flesh. Um, and for what I'm going to be using them for, they are ideal. Um, we've got some shading in there, some highlights, etc. So I'm going to show you how I did this um, to, to this level. I mean, these are not competition standard. They're not going to win any figure painting contests. But for what I'm going to use them for, I think they're, they're going to be ideal. And they're lovely to paint and they're not difficult either. Um, which is always good. So, this is the guy I'm going to show you. Um, so I've just built him up, primed him in Mr. Surfacer 50 or Mr. Finishing Surfacer 1500 Black. Uh, let that dry, mounted him, just drilled a little hole in his foot, mounted him on a, a cocktail stick or a toothpick, depending where you are in the world. Um, and he's obviously holding his rifle and also getting ready to throw some sort of grenade. Um, so yeah, this is the guy I'm going to be doing. I'm going to show you how to do it. So, what we're going to do, we're not going to Zenith or highlight this with the airbrush. Um, but it does need something. Um, so we're going to do it by dry brushing, basically. So here I have a selection of brushes. So the one I'm going to use for this is a Ammo by MIG number four. And it's just, a, as you can see, just a flat, flat brush, nice and soft. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So what I've got also in front of me is this, which is um, some cardstock or chipboard, as you would know it in the US or North America. And I've just sprayed that black. Um, so every so often I use this as like a textured palette for dry brushing. Um, but every so often, once it kind of gets full of all the colors, um, yeah. I just respray it black basically, it's nice and simple. So, if I go in this corner here, so you can see what we're doing is taking as much, there is a texture to it, but we don't get any fibers off it, which is what's key really. Um, so I just want to get the majority of the paint off the brush, like so, and you can see the texture form in there, and that's what we're after, because that helps us. Uh, the colour I'm using is Citadel colour Orthuan or Orthuan Grey, which is a very light grey, almost white. And then all we're going to do, working from the top of the figure down, is I'm just going to start to dry brush this where the light would sort of most likely catch. Now this does two things. Um, it's going to make my base coating easier, which I'm going to do with a brush. Um, and it also highlights a lot of the details for me. So things like his scarf around his neck, areas of his face, because when these figures at this size, a sort of 28 mil, are all black after being primed, it's quite difficult for anyone really, me especially, to pick out all the little details. And as you can see now, you know, helmet straps and all that sort of stuff. We're, we're really starting to get some detail on him uh, or being able to see all the different details. Um, so that's what we're after and that's exactly why I do it. Now over the kneecaps here and the top of the thigh, I want it a bit lighter. And then bits that are in shadow are like here behind his weapon. We don't want that particularly light. We want light across the top of his shoulders here. And obviously his hat. And it's as simple as that. So I'm not even going to clean my brush, which is very naughty. And the next color I'm going to use is Citadel color Morcast Bone. Exactly the same process. You know, a little bit on the brush and then remove as much as we can. So we'll go in the opposite corner of the palette. 
and this is going to be the base colour for the uniform essentially. So we don't have to worry about drying time etc. This is a very quick, efficient way. You know, if you were doing loads of these guys for an army, this is a, a quick, efficient way of doing it. So basically, all over his trousers, his jacket, not the helmet. We're not going to worry about that because, as we saw, that's going to be green. We're just going to go around and start to build up that colour as best we can. Bear with you on a second. So, a little bit more on the brush. And we're really going to start to build up that sort of brown, light brown, sandy colour on his on his uniform. So I'm going to go around and get all this done, and once it's done, I shall come back and show you where we're at. Okay, so, unfortunately I'm not a professional figure painter, so I don't have professional lighting or anything like that to show you on video, but the colour is where I want it to be, and that is just a couple of layers of dry brushing, as I said, going heavier across the top of his shoulders here, sort of top of his thigh here, just to give that impression of the light sort of coming down on top of him. Um, yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. So, we're going to switch to brushes now. Um, I'm going to go to more traditional type painting. Um, we're going to do his kind of webbing straps and all, all that sort of stuff, his water bottle carrier, uh, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So, colour for this is Citadel Death Guard Green, which is a very light green. Too light, actually, for, for what we're trying to achieve, but it's a good base. Um, obviously, his helmet as well will be in the green. So if I show you on his helmet, so this is a Citadel small layer brush. And there we go. So as you can see at the moment, that is a very light green, probably a little bit too light for, for what we want, but we're gonna change that shortly. And I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. So it's a very, as I say, very good paint. All Citadels are good, really, and um, good coverage. And there we go. So that that's good enough for what we need it for. So what we're also going to do is these straps across his back that we can see. I'm going to pick those out in the same colour, um, in this kind of webbing green that we're hoping to achieve. His belt we're not going to do because we're going to do that the same colour as his boots, sort of a leathery brown colour. So just picking out all the details around his water bottle carrier. And and for this size, and you know, these figures are, oh, they're really well detailed. The guys with the chest rigs and, and all that sort of stuff. And obviously the US figures um, are really, you know all the equipment's on there so really impressive at this scale and at this price point you know you get loads of these in the box for for not a lot of money so that's it pretty much uh, for this guy so it's just uh no it isn't i've spotted another strap which is kind of his crushed webbing strap here so we'll just put a bit of green on that and there we go that's it it's very very simple it is sort of you know, if you see it, paint it, basically. <laughs> so it's very, very simple. So now that's starting to dry because we haven't had to use a lot of paint. You know, these figures are not big, um, so they dry out really, really quickly. So it won't take long for that to dry. So while that's happening, what we're going to do is we're going to paint his boots and, it, and his main belt there. And what we're going to use for that is citadel color again and this is rhinox hide so this is like a reddy browny color um 
almost like a, a cherry red leather type color is how I see it. So what I'm going to do is pick out his his main belt here. That will do us. We don't have to be massively um, what's the word careful at this stage. We can go outside of the lines, as they say. And there you go. That's the sort of colour that it's giving us. This kind of leathery, leathery brown colour. Um, and I'm going to do his boots in the same. Be a little bit more. Don't have to be as careful with his boots. Fairly easy step. Step boots. Bad, bad comedy. So yeah, that's it. Now on this one in particular, don't forget them anyway. But oh, don't forget the sole of the boot because obviously that's going to be seen once he's placed on the final diorama. So make sure we paint the sole. It's like painting the underneath of tanks. Has to be done. There we go. So that's that done. Now, by now, this kind of greeny colour is now dry. So again, we're going to switch out brushes. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this stuff, which is one of the Army Painter Quick Shades. And this one's called Military Shader. So it's like a dark olive drab green colour. Um, and I'm just going to decant it into my my palette here only a, a little drop that's all we're going to need give it a bit of a shake and literally just a little drop and then we're going to use a citadel layer uh, medium brush it's a little bit bigger because we want to make sure we've got plenty of this this shade on our brush like so you can see it on the end there. And then as we put it onto his helmet, what that should start to do, first it's gonna darken the original green and it's gonna to start to pick out the detail, such as the strap around it, etc. In this kind of military green. Works very similar to Citadel contrast paints um, but more so this one's more of a military green color and that that is as simple as that um, So again, just get a little bit on our brush rotate your brush to get it to it, you know a nice tip And then we're almost stippling or dabbing this on now on his webbing straps To create that that green color and Hopefully the camera is picking that up now is it a little bit more distinctive and a little bit more of the colour we're looking for for the North Vietnamese sort of webbing colour and greens that they use. We don't have to be too careful on this water bottle at this stage. We can be a bit, a bit frivolous on there, a bit frivolous. And there we go. That it's as simple as that. Um, you know, we just want that hint of green, that shade. Um, and we're starting to get somewhere now. He's starting to look like like the others, which is what we want. So again, that's just water comes up. So now what we're going to do is do the metallics. So we don't want to paint his entire rifle sort of metallic silver. What we want to do is just gently dry brush over it. So another MIG brush here. This is their number six. Um, and it's kind of a slanted flat edge brush. You can use the other one, but I just want to make sure it's entirely dry before I do this. And again, a little dab onto the, the palette. And just start to work that into the bristles until we've pretty much got nothing left. And then again, we're just going to dry brush over the prominent edges of his of his rifle here, 
and the, the barrel, the muzzle brake, etc. So all we want to do is a hint of metallic rather than it being silver. Because there's nothing worse than seeing silver. It, it, yeah, I don't like it. It's not a good look. And we're going to tone this back even more as we as we carry on. So that's it. That's his, his sort of rifle. Um, obviously, we've got to do the wood stock and foregrip, which we will do. Clean our brush. So now we're going to go back to a smaller brush again. The Citadel layer. Uh, small. What we're going to do here uh, is using, sorry, I didn't mention Citadel Color Iron, uh, sorry, Iron Breaker. So we're going to do his water bottle as a metallic silver in its webbing just there, like so. And that will do us. And then we're going to do the head of the grenade, which are like stick grenades. Uh, so we're going to do that in silver. And last but not least, we're going to do the buckle of his belt in silver. Like so. And there we go. Unfortunately, guys, it's the colours are being, it's not very really clear. Um, it looks better to my eye. You have to take my word for it. So now what we want to do is we want to do all the kind of wood bits on him. So we've got the, the stock of his rifle and the foregrip and the handle of the grenade. So this is using, again, Citadel Color Steel Legion Drab. Which is kind of this flat earth mid brown type color no ideal for this a lot of the time the hand uh, handles or pistol grip were, were wood as well um oh there we go so yeah you can see there we're doing the the stark the pistol grip and we're going to do the the full grip And there we go. So the stock, the burt, the pistol grip, everything's done. Now, um, and we're just going to do the, the actual uh, little bit of wood that we can see just there on the grenade. Super. So while that's drying, we need to put some flesh on it now. Um, so the way we're going to do that, dead simple is we're going to use again citadel color cadian flesh tone all right it's, it's a very sort of mid flesh tone um so that's what we're going to use so i'm just going to thin that down a, a touch just with a, a drop of water probably 50 50 i guess kind of do it to eye and that just enables it to to flow much easier off our brush onto the actual model as you can see and then we'll do his, his fingers and then his thumb etc try not to leave any gaps if we can help it <laughs> um, and at this scale really we're creating the illusion of hands we're not going <laughs> into massive detail um, because there, there really is little point um, some people can I can't I'm not good enough at this scale well not good enough at any scale really but some people we really go to town they were doing eyes and all sorts I don't not at this scale create the impression of so what we're going to do is let that dry let that dry and then it, then the wash will be going over the flesh while that's drying 
we're now going to turn to another wash uh, where have i put it here we go so again citadel color this is norm oil it's one of their shade sort of colors um, and literally we're going to anywhere that's metallic or sort of wood we're just going to put it on there and that takes that metallic tone right back so it's not silvery looking makes the wood tone or the brown that we put there it makes that look a bit more natural and sits in sort of the, the very li little recessed details on the rifle um, so yeah it kind of works does what it says on the tin really and anywhere it's metallic we're going to do that so we'll do it around the base of the grenade and the head of the grenade you don't need loads at all at all it's just a hint and it just knocks it back enough you know super uh yeah so we're there pretty much just put a little dab around his belt buckle perfect and on the the water bottle And it, as I say, it just needs a hint of it. it. It works wonders. It really is good stuff. So what we're going to do now, we have to wait for that uh, that flesh tone to, to dry. And then, and then when we come back, we'll pop a wash on top of that. So see you in a minute. Okay. So we're getting to the point, it's not quite dry yet, but it's dry enough. For, for what we want to do um, so hopefully we can start to see the facial facial features and stuff so what we're going to use now another Citadel product um, which is one of their contrast paints called Gullum and Flesh so this should really sit into all the recesses in between the fingers the eyes mouth and start to take it from looking like like it does to like we want it to i don't know how else to explain it really um so you kind of put this contrast all over concentrating as best you can on the recesses around his neck underneath the rim of his helmet and it will dry i don't know we can already see how it's starting to to pick out the the details a little bit and that's exactly what we want it to do so at the moment he's going to look once this dries like he's got a wicked suntan because it's that sort of tone but we're then going to go back in and very subtly highlight some of the the facial features and the tops of the fingers etc um so we we'll again let that dry uh it takes about 15 minutes probably um we could always add more if we need to or we feel we need to and also the tone um, but that should be enough if not we can add more it's easier to add more and take away if we've got a little bit of excess then just dab your brush and the brush will remove it back onto the bristles and then obviously we're just going to clean clean the brush so yeah we'll come back and then uh, that will be the final stage then so we'll be back really really shortly okay so <clears throat> the flesh wash the Gulliman flesh is now dry and we can see hopefully um that we're starting to get some definition around the facial features and hands etc it's exactly what we want so the way i'm going to do this now is we're going to use another citadel coat it's one of their layer paints called kisler flesh 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 which is a lighter flesh color um but over the top of the gulliman flesh it should work pretty well so we're going to use an army painter insane detail brush oh, there we go 
uh, which is a, a tiny tiny brush and we only need a tiny tiny bit of this on the end of the brush um, thinned probably 60 40 70 30 with um, just with normal water and we're just gonna highlight tips of the fingers and the knuckles and the hand there and again just the thumb and the top of the hand closest to the, the top of the, the model and then blending that out as we move down and that's literally it that's all we need we don't need a lot um a small brush is great the problem is that it doesn't hold a lot of paint um and sometimes that's beneficial but other times i don't find it is um, and i always try and use the biggest brush i can um, just because it holds more paint and I find you end up with a smoother finish, but these hands on this thing are tiny. So, um, yeah, we're going to use a small brush. So then what I want to do is go into the face itself. So we're going to start with the nose, bridge of the nose and just a, a very delicate line. Just down the nose. And then we move on to the tip and the side of the nose. Tops of the cheekbones. And again, run out of paint. That's, it doesn't hold a lot. Um, but that's good. That's good. Means we're not using a lot. <laughs> so again, just tops of the cheekbones. And then blending it out down the rest of the face onto the chin ears and we're just going for that sort of highlighting the facial definition unfortunately guys i, I do apologize the lighting for the camera it looks fine to my eye but the lighting for the camera He's not good, but I just wanted to show you the process. This isn't an in-depth tutorial. Um, I don't really do those. There's, there's people doing them way better than me. Um, so I just wanted to show you my process and the way I've painted these and the colors, etc. I used to, to get them to where I want to be for what I'm going to use them for, which will all become clear in the next next video so again top of this hand holding the grenade and then we're going to just going to pick out the fingers and there we go so last things we need some color uh, we need some red so essentially he's wearing a kind of neckerchief scarf thing hopefully you can see that where the brush is here so we're going to do that in red um, and we're also just going to pick out the dot on his helmet which, which would have been his badge which was red and gold but at that size there's no way um, we're going to be doing it red and gold so red is good enough and it is literally just a dot there on his helmet and then his sort of scarf we're going to pick out in red this is Mephiston red from uh, again from Citadel we want that kind of suggestion because we don't need to completely sort of block it in solidly because in the next stage we'll add some shadows to it and then we're at a stage where essentially the figure is done or done to the standard we want it or I want it to be rather 
for, for what we're going to be using it for. So we don't need to worry too much about the back here um, because we can see on the figure, you probably won't see it on the camera, we've got this collar of the jacket here um, and the scarf's kind of tucked into that. So actually at the back of the figure is, is the collar rather than the scarf. So it's just that suggestion at the front. And then all we're going to do with our small layer brush is we're going to use another Citadel shade which is Agrax Earth Shade, great to put on top of red to create shadows and that sort of stuff. And that is literally all we're going to do. So we'll just load the brush up with a bit of a bit of the shade. It's almost like a wash really as we know it as scale modelers. And then we're just going to go in anywhere that's red with the Agrax Earth Shade. And what that will do is just add some natural looking shadows in the creases of the material. And that is it. So, just run the, the badge there. And that's it guys, so he's done. Um, very, very simple. As I say, I'm not a figure painter. I'm not a professional YouTuber. But that's just the process that I used on all of the North Vietnamese figures. Um, let's move that, up, that I'm going to put onto this. Um, so there we go. That's another one. It's finished, dried, flat coated, and that's that's essentially the process I used. And I just wanted to show that. So until next time, stay safe, happy hobbying. Thanks for watching. Um, and when we come back next time, we'll, we'll start to see, hopefully, what's in my mind eye taking place down on the bench. So um, until next time, guys, stay safe. Happy hobbying. Bye-bye.